Welcome everyone to the House of Peace 15 minute food for thought. I'm coming to you tonight and I need you to like, share, and follow. Come on and get in there and start a watch party. Let your friends and your family and everybody know that we are on tonight. And I'm going to be talking about life lessons from Joshua. So come on, get in there and start your watch parties right now. I'm going to give you a few seconds here to get that going. And while you're doing that, gather your pencil your pad, pen, whatever you got to get to take your notes with and follow me and like. Come on now, I need you to do it. You got the watch party going? Everybody's in? Come on, let them know we in there. All right, I hope you're doing well and you're doing good. Let's get going. Life lessons from Joshua, what we're talking about tonight. Joshua is best known as the second in command who God chose to lead the Israelites into the promised land after Moses' death. Joshua's focus, that's a key word now, Joshua's focus, faithfulness, courage, and obedience led to his effectiveness of being one of Israel's greatest leaders. That was a lot said right there. The life of Joshua, we can learn so much from Joshua. Oh, we can do a bunch of Bible studies from Joshua, and maybe we will. But tonight, we're going to be focusing on a few things. So, focus, his focus, his faithfulness, his courage, and his obedience led to his effectiveness, okay? Now, what can we learn from his life? That is the question tonight. What can we learn from Joshua's life? Several life lessons led to his success which if we apply it to our lives, we will succeed in everyday life also. So one of the things I want to talk about tonight is meditation. Come on, put that in on the screen. Meditation, come on. Are you with me? Stay in here. Meditation, M-E-D-I-T-A-T-I-O-N. Meditation. Type it in, let me see it. You there? Meditation. Come on, yeah, all right, you got it. Joshua showed us the importance of meditating on God's word. The Lord told him, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything that is written in it. Joshua 1.8. Joshua, the first chapter, the eighth verse. And it says also, and only then, only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. There it is, right there. If we meditate on the Word of God, if we meditate on this book, just like the Lord told Joshua, he said, then you will be prosperous and successful. How many of you want to be prosperous and successful? Type that in on the screen. Say, I want to be prosperous and successful. I want to succeed. I want to be prosperous. Type it in. Come on, let me know you're following me. Only then, the Lord says, will you be successful successful and prosperous. God essentially was telling him to get this book in his head. That's the way I feel sometimes. The Bible is so powerful. Everything we need in life is here. And that's why the Lord said meditate on it day and night. Keep your focus. Okay. I want to take this book sometime and I just want to say, mm, let it all go in, let it all go in my head because I want to know. It doesn't work like that, but I wish it did. I wish I could just plug it in. But the only way I can plug it in, I'm going to have to meditate on it. I'm going to have to think on it. When I read the scriptures, a lot of times we have to take our time. You know, I've been in those um, read the Bible in the year thing. I've probably done that about three times. Well, to keep up with all those chapters that you have to read in a day, you reading the Bible so fast, you're not meditating on it. It's just reading the word. You're not, you're not getting it. You can't get it. You can't. It's too much. A lot of times when you're in a chapter and you're doing your personal Bible reading, you have to stop on one scripture and say, what does that really mean? How can I apply that to my life? That's what I mean. You got to meditate on it. You got to meditate on the word of God. We got to soak it in. We got to take time and get it in. Sometimes I have to read it over and over. Not only that, I read it in different translations. That helps you a lot. If you read in different translations, thank God for the different translations that are out here now. You can do the easy read, the new living translation. I'm reading in that a lot. Now, even the Amplified give you almost a paragraph and really breaks it down for today's life. 
if you look at that where you are in today's because a lot of the Bible are written in the old English for that time now we in modern times so we can really understand from where we are the word of God as you see does not change but the translation will allow you to understand it better for the times we're living in so God was essentially telling Joshua get this book in your head meditate on this thing day or night it said obedience and success are connected to our, medita our meditation let me say it again obedience and success are connected to our meditation let me read another scripture psalms the first chapter verses two through three and again i'm in the new living translation nlt it says but they delight in the law of the lord meditating on it day and night that's how we delight in the lord by meditating on his word day and night and it says in verse 3, they are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. What is that saying? The trees are planted along the banks of the river, and they are bearing fruit each season as they should. Whatever tree, the leaves don't never wither. They are being refreshed. That's what it said. When we meditate on God's word, this is how we're going to be. We like these trees. We are going to be refreshed. We won't wither. In other words, we won't fall down. We won't be getting so weak that we can't go on because meditating on the word is going to give us strength. That's what it says here. They're, they're uh, planted along the river. They bear fruit each season and their leaves never, and they prosper in all that they do. That's how we want to be. We want to be like these trees that's planted along the riverbank that God gives us this illustration. So we will be strong. We will be healthy. We will be prosperous. We will be successful. And that's in everything you do, wherever you are, wherever God has you, whatever level, platform, whatever you on, job, whatever you do in life, God will have you to be successful if you follow his word and you meditate on it, okay? Another scripture, Philippians 4 chapter the eighth verse this one here i want you to meditate on this all week okay i want you to meditate on this all week and it says here finally brethren whatever things are true what is true accurate whatever things are accurate whatever things are correct these are the things that we need to think about these are the things that we need to focus on okay whatever is accurate whatever is correct that's what true means, okay? Think on those things. It says, the next one says, whatever things are noble. Now, we don't hear people saying these words now in today's terms, noble. What is noble? He, I heard people say, well, he was a noble man. What does that mean? It means he was righteous. He or she was righteous, virtuous, good. We are to think on these things. Some, a lot of times we think on the negative. Oh my goodness, we go negative because of the sinful nature. It'll cause us to go into the negative and our mind will just stay there. As people say, your mind in the gutter. Get it up. Okay. A lot of times we think in the negative, we think in the worst, we think in the bad. But the Bible tells us to meditate on these things, okay? And whatsoever things are pure, okay, clean, clear fresh. Those are the things we should be meditating on, keeping our mind on these things. Virtuous, moral, ethical. We don't have this a lot of times in our society. People are not being ethical a lot of times, okay? Meditate on these things. This is what the scripture commands us to do, to meditate on the word of God. A lot of times people seem to lose heart. You know, we all go there at times. We seem to lose heart. And uh, we just get, you know, a weak in our heart or our mind sometimes. And it's because of the absence of the peace of God in our lives. You know, we get peace when you read the scriptures. You get peace when you meditate on certain scriptures, okay? Uh, the peace of God then goes, uh, then acts as a guard for our hearts and minds because that's what the Bible says. We got to get our minds in the right place. Put our minds in the right place. That's what I'm going to say. Put Type that in. Put your mind in the right place. Put your mind in the right place. 
A lot of times our mind is on the wrong thing. We in the wrong place. Put our mind on the right place. You know, sometimes I'm thinking about something. It's not good. I'd be like, okay, okay, let me think on these good things. Let me think on the right things, okay? Let me think on what is right. Let me focus on mine. What's, what's good? What's pure? What's virtuous? Nope, don't let your mind go there. That's what I have to tell myself, okay? And I try to meditate on these things, okay? And so we need to practice thinking on these things, things that are praiseworthy. We need to meditate on these things, pure, lovely, okay? I'm throwing out some more words. What is a good report? That's another one, okay? So I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm going to start at that again because there's some more definitions I want to say. I said whatsoever is true. We said that, and I said what that meant. Noble, just, you know, a just person, a righteous person, uh, pure, things that are lovely. We need to think on these things. A lot of things we focus so much on the bad or the negative. We think of what is of a good report. You get a report. A lot of people talk about the doctor, the school. Did you pass the class? Did you get a good report from the teacher? Did you get a good report? People say, did you get a good report from the doctor? Think on the good things. Don't go negative. A lot of times we think of negative. Woo, I don't know what it's going to be. Oh, it's going to be bad. No, we got to think on good things and say, oh, I'm going to pass. I know I'm going to pass. I'm going to get my I'm gonna study hard. I'm going to pass. Oh, I believe God, the doctor going to, the guy going to help me. The doctor going to give me a good report. The God that's going to tell me some good things, some things maybe I need to do or change. You know, don't look at everything as always bad. We got to think on good things, a good report. Okay, if there's any virtue or if there's any praise, anything that's praiseworthy. I said that in one of the sessions last week. A lot of times we don't, we don't know how to praise people. We don't know how to say good things to people. We need to practice these things, saying good things to your family members, to your children, your husband, your wife your cousin, your daughter. A lot of times we say a negative thing is your coworker. We always thinking of bad. Our mind got to go bad first, right then stop and say, no, let me say something good. You know what? I appreciate what you did. Thank you so-and-so for getting my clothes out the dryer. Thank you for folding my clothes up. I know you was tired. You didn't have to do it. Thank you for cooking that dinner. I know you worked all day. Oh, thank you for doing the laundry. We got to think on, you know, I'm just, that's just everyday stuff in the house. We got to think on these, meditate on things that are praiseworthy. A lot of times we don't do it because we don't even say these things, okay? So meditate on these things. Much of our Christian life comes down to the mind. The mind, as Joyce Myers would say, is a battlefield. This mind, this why it's on the top, it controls us. Get this mind in order. Focus, focus, focus. Type that in. Say focus, focus. We got to get our mind in order. And we got to think on the right things, okay? Romans, the 12th chapter, and the second verse says, it speaks about the essential of our minds being transformed. That's one of the scriptures that I do know. It says here in Romans, the 12th chapter, in the second verse, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is, that is good, all right now, that is acceptable, the word of God says, and perfect will of God. See, we got to get our mind in the right place and think on the right things. And when we do these things, we will be successful. We will uh, save ourselves a lot of heartache, a lot of mental anguish, a lot of pain. And we will have the peace of God. We will have a peace of God that will guard our hearts and minds. And it will help us if we have this peace. So it also speaks of, in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and the 5th verse speaks of an importance of casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's a whole nother lesson too. And bringing these things, every thought in the captivity to the obedience of Christ. I know that's a lot right there to absorb. But in other words, we casting down the bad things and we thinking on the good things so that Christ can help us in our minds, okay? So many times the, the Lord knew that, 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 many times you know that God has told you something, but we got distracted and we didn't do it. And we have not been doing what God has told us to do. So storing God's word of instruction in Joshua stored these things in his heart and in his mind. The Lord told him to meditate. Remember, he was guard, uh, guiding out over 2 million people. Talking to the left, talking to the right. 
people doing all, saying all these different things, but Joshua couldn't focus on those people. He had to focus on what God was saying. I think we should do this, Joshua. I think we should go this way. I think we should do it like that. No, no, no. He couldn't get distracted. He had to focus on what God had told him to do, and that's what we got to do. What has God told you to do? Maybe he told you some years ago to do it. Maybe he just told you recently. God is, has a purpose and a plan for all of us. What has he told you to do? You need to focus on that, and we need to get going on that. And some people say, get back on the mark. Get back on the square. Where has God told you to be? Okay, so we got to meditate on these things. I need you all week to be meditating on these things that God told us to do over in Philippians, the fourth chapter, and the eighth verse. Meditate on those things, okay? Our 15 minutes is up already for this session. We're going to go in next week. We're going to be talking about memory, okay? So meditate on the right things. Think on the words over and over. Get your focus. Get yourself together, okay? I'll see you on next week. Remember now to like, share, and to follow us, okay? See you next week. <laughs>